The hardest questions on any certification exam is not the fact-based, discrete, knowledge type questions, you know, do you know it or don't you? It's do you know your stuff and then can you apply it? So today on Quidna, let's look at one of those harder questions where we have to actually apply in a situation or in a scenario what we actually know. So let's take a look at the question. I totally forgot there has to be like an intro with the music and the bumper before we actually get to the question, so let's get that out of the way first. And then we can do the question. Okay, so here's the question. I've done so many of these I should really know the structure, right? But here's the question, and this question is hard because not only do we have to know all these different types of access controls and kind of what makes them different, we also have to know in which situation we would actually apply or implement it, right? So that's what we gotta be thinking about in this question. And there's two big hints in the scenario that lean us towards one uh, over the other three. And that is we're a admin for a government agency and we're implementing Bella Padula's security model. So what is the test writer trying to tell us? Well, a government agency, what do you think the utmost priority of a government agency would be when it comes to access control, right? Security over everything, prioritizing security. And that is re that hypothesis is reinforced by this next hint where Bella Padula is actually the security model that they're using. As we know, Bella Padula focuses on what? Confidentiality, exactly. And what focuses on integrity? Biba, right. So the point is, Bella Padula, right? That's the one that says no read up, no write down, right? Security, confidentiality over everything. So now the question becomes a lot easier. Okay, which of the following prioritizes security over everything, right? That's a much simpler question. And right away, the answer, you could even answer this without multiple choices, right? The answer right away is MAC, or mandatory access control, which makes a lot of sense because MAC is frequently used in a government agency because it's based on labels, right? So sometimes known as classifications. So you've heard about top secret, secret, confidential, public, right? Those are the labels that MAC uses. So for example, if an object is operating at a top secret or has a top secret label, and our user wants to access it, only has secret clearance, they're not gonna be able to access that file or that object, right? That's how Mac works and it's very secure because in part it's non-discretionary. It's just based on labels. If you don't have at least matching, you're automatically by default not gonna be given access, right? So that's why Mac is the right answer. Now I just mentioned that Mac is non-discretionary. So that should tell you that discretionary is a little less secure, right? So that's why this one doesn't make sense. DAC, it's good for flexibility, uh, but again, it's not as secure as Mac. Now, attribute, also known as ABAC. This is actually uh, new content that was introduced in the latest CSSP exam update, even though it's been around for a little bit longer than that. ABAC gives you a lot of granularity, a lot of flexibility. Um, ABAC can kind of uh, give you very specific statements, uh, like this uh, system admin should only be able to access uh, this sales folder and quarter one of the new year, right? Very specific details. Again, it's more flexible, but it doesn't prioritize security over everything else. And role-based access control, this is actually not a bad answer choice, right? Because role-based is good for large organizations. It's, it's a form of uh, non-discretionary. It's just based on your role, but it's not as a good answer. It's not as a good, it's not as a good answer as, I think I said that right as Mac, mandatory access control. So that's why the answer here is Mac over everything else. Okay, so think about what we just did. We went from a very complex situation, we pulled out the stuff that mattered, or the hints or the signals that the item writer was trying to give to us, and then we made a much simpler question, and then we could, it was so simple that we could answer the question even without multiple uh, choice options, right? And that's where you want to get to. That's what you want to do on almost every question, especially the complex ones. Make it as simple as possible. Stop, think, and predict. Try to guess the right answer choice. And this is a strategy, something, this is something you need to practice. It's a strategy that we talk a lot about in our courses. It's something that we emphasize. And we have plenty of questions, difficult questions like this for you to practice on. So, hope you found this helpful. Hopefully it helps in your studies. Hopefully you found your way to the right answer. And hopefully we'll see you next week on Quitna.